So I've been sitting out here for about, I'd say an hour. <laughs> and I just can't get over how beautiful this garden is, guys. I'm loving it. I am so thankful for this. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Shamira Benson, one part of Team Benson, and I am here to bring you a garden tour of my beautiful small space <laughs> desert garden here in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, zone 9B. And yeah, we have a lot. We just have a lot going back here. This makes me so happy, guys. So guys, we're gonna start in the back here. I am out debating if I want to put up my shade cloth or put up some shade cloth and I'll actually show you guys why but we still have had pretty cool mornings pretty cool mornings pretty cool evenings and so I want my summer veggies like my Armenian cucumbers my regular cucumbers my eggplants to get as full sun as possible so they can get nice and healthy and big before those really hot temps but I have some of my spring-ish type things that are like wait it's getting hot so guys we're gonna start here with my sweet Marconi pepper which I just watered so like that one looks a little rough but I want to show you this right here this right here is the beginning of a sun skull so what this is is that it's a sunburn that the plant got that the fruit got so it's not a root rot it's not anything like that it's a sun skull it's a sunburn and how you know that it's a sunburn versus a root rot because one it's not on the flower end of it and two it's where the sun hits it now this one grew wonky versus this one that grew straight so but I have my hooks right here in my fence that hold my shade cloth just for this area right here so I think that today I'm gonna put up some shade cloth and start having at least my peppers have some shade cloth on them now we also have some lemon balm right here that also probably would like some shade cloth we have some thumb tom orange hat tomatoes right here we have in our medicinal bed our big beautiful yarrow we have some evening primrose back there which grows way better than regular primrose <laughs> and this one also it's spreading like it started with just one little plant and look at that it's already popping up everywhere so I think that this bed is probably going to be his or um, our yarrow and our evening primrose but also our hyssop is looking quite nice I wish the hyssop would spread a little bit but it's not it's just growing straight up now back here, I don't know, really know what this is right here. I think it might also be a primrose, but the leaves are starting to look a little bit different. So it could just be a weed, and I'll probably just pull it. I feel like 50% of gardening is, did that pop up from one of the seeds I planted, or is that just a weed? <laughs> and then you water it and you wonder. Sometimes weeds have their own medicinal value, but I don't know, I don't want that one just sucking up all the water in my medicinal bed. Now below it, I have just a uh, wild nasturtium that is growing from somewhere in the dirt. It self-seeded itself from last year. And then we have our big beefsteak tomato that I haven't pulled yet, but look at all of these red tomatoes on it. So we need to go ahead and get these off of there and then decide if we're gonna keep it or just trim it. I've had a lot of people tell me, big beefsteak tomatoes aren't like the best tomatoes. They may not be the best but they were my mother's favorite tomato and they're tomato that i have grown since she's passed and also many of you have grown since she's passed so it's been one of those things that has kept her memory alive so even though it may not be the best tomatoes i get it <laughs> it's gonna always be in my garden and i always do love a big beefsteak tomato and so does my husband so that's all that matters <laughs> Now moving along to this side, this is my worm bin. A lot of people ask me, what is this with the lid on it? It's my worm bin. It got so hot that the actual handle fell off. I didn't screw it in, I just glued it. So I need to put that back on there. But this is where I feed my red wiggler worms. But here we have some beets that I'm gonna be pulling this week. We have Detroit red beets and then we have a Yukon gold beet. We have our early girl tomato. Look at her. She is happy. She is growing some good sized tomatoes. And look at that, guys. We already have some red ones. And they're pretty decent size. Look at that. Look at that. I'm so excited about that. We haven't had big tomatoes in a while. We have some turmeric right here. 
and another turmeric right there. I think this one might be turmeric slash, slash urchinacea. Because yes, this is definitely urchinacea and this is definitely turmeric. Once again, when you throw seeds in a pot and think that they're not doing anything, or roots in a pot for the turmeric, they do do something. It's a real life struggle of a small space gardener. You just want everything to go, and you want everything to grow, and you don't have any patience. So sometimes you get pots that just one day have everything in them. Now moving on along down the bed, we have our parsley, which look at that, we're getting another flushing of parsley. I thought my parsley would be done by now. The weather has been good in the mornings, so this parsley has continued to grow. So we are gonna get another flushing of parsley, which is great because we put parsley on everything. We have onions growing right here in the front. In the second row, we have our um, okra. This one is our heavy hitter okra. So I think I'm gonna keep, well, I know I'm gonna keep that one, and I think I'm gonna keep this one. This one right here, I'm letting to see if the, anything happens to that one. That one's the backup. If not, I'm gonna prune that one, and then we're gonna tr try just growing two and see how it grows. We have our sweet mint right there. And then we have, look at this guys, our Chinese red lung noodle beans are doing so well. Look at that. And if we get closer, you see we have some noodle beans actually forming. Now I put up a video on Friday about my noodle beans getting attacked <laughs> by um, aphids. So it's something that I am currently treating with just a hard gust of water every morning. I come out and I rinse them all off. And it's been keeping that population down. What's really going to help is when our temperatures aren't as cool in the morning. So when those temperatures heat up in the morning, that aphid problem will take care of itself. But to make sure that it doesn't kill my plant, I'm just going to rinse them, keep rinsing it, keep rinsing it, keep rinsing it, and and get those noodle beans off as soon as they turn so that then the plants not putting so much energy into that and it's putting energy into continuing to grow itself and give itself enough shade for when it gets really really hot now over here we also have our lemongrass which probably could use a little bit of shade cloth too um, it's doing okay ish I don't know I'm going back and forth on if I want to give it shade cloth yet normally I don't until like June but I might give it some a little bit early we have our Armenian cucumber right in here, which definitely needs more sun. So it's growing pretty fast, and hopefully it can get to about like right here, because right here it'll get a lot more sun than it is right there. We have some zucchini here and here. These are Black Beauty zucchinis. And then we also have some onions right here in the middle. And then we have our Roma tomato right here. This one's growing nicely too. We have our turmeric right here in front of it. And then we have our snapdragons. And look at this, guys. Already, again. And no, those are not grapes. So those are black cherry tomatoes. Can you guys believe, one, how big this thing is? And two, that it's continuing to go. Like when I started recording how many pounds we were getting, we I think we've been up to like 60 or 70 pounds of black cherry tomatoes. And that was after we had already picked a whole bunch for Passover, gave a whole bunch out to our friends, gave some to synagogue, like all those different things. And then we still got more on there and there's still all of these to go. Like, let me show you the front of the plant. Like this is absolutely crazy. There are still so many red ones on here and then so many green ones on here too and green baby ones. I feel like the only thing that is going to actually take this plant out is going to be the heat. And as you can see, there's parts of it that are drying out, but yeah, I think it's going to be the heat that actually takes this plant out because this is crazy, crazy, crazy. Now on this side, we have our potatoes. Now that our quail are gone, we can water the potatoes as needed. So they are happy. They got a lot of like little leaves on them and they haven't flowered flowered yet and they haven't died back but the ones that are dying back like the leaves the very um beginning leaves i want to say i am letting those be the mulch for this bed so what i'm doing is i'm just kind of going through and just kind of breaking them off like that and just laying them down there so that then that is like that layer of mulch and so that if any of my potatoes start to pop through they'll be covered now over here we have 
are stevia. I like this variety of stevia that I got from AMP Farm or AMP Nursery better than I like this one because this one flowered right away. Sorry guys, that was a motorcycle, but this one flowered right away, which I do like it the fact that I'm going to be able to try and get some seeds and I don't think that they are the same type of, um, of stevia. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just that this one was older and this one was younger. And then we also have a Space Master Cucumber right there that is starting to get bigger. And we have our mulberry tree that hopefully is going to get put in some land pretty soon. People have asked me if we are still land shopping and yes, we are still land shopping and yes, we are waiting for God just to give us the perfect land. <laughs> so if it takes more time, it takes more time, but we are continu continuing to land shop. Now underneath this black cherry tomato on this side, there are some shishito peppers that look way happier now that we've thinned it out. So we have one shishito pepper there that's throwing off some more shishitos and then we have one back there and then we have our older one right here. This one is about two years old versus those two that are still young. Now underneath here we have Miss Eggie. She is our Ichabob eggplant and she is also the mother of Big Nisi, who is also an Ichabob eggplant in one of our namesake plants. She is starting to grow new leaves because those first ones got attacked by some um, uh, spider mites, but now it's doing really good. Now we have some onions along here as well, and then we have our um, more Space Master cucumbers right there. Now these are all going to do a lot better once this isn't covering it. But for right now, we're just letting them limp along and get as big as they're going to get while we get as many tomatoes as we can get because we are canning tomatoes. Back there also we have some sweet mint, or no, that one is a peppermint. And that one is sweet alyssum. In front here we have another beautiful turmeric, which I think my turmeric is going to need a little bit of shade cloth because I can see like a few burns on it. So I'm going to make sure I get that in an area probably either underneath the umbrella or shaded. And then we have our spicy shishita pepper, little hot plant right here. It is growing in really really nicely and it just puts off so many. We have so many peppers dried from that one little plant. We have our red potatoes. That one is a Yukon Goal in our um, Vago kids bed. And this one in the pot is red potatoes. And then in our dragon fruit, which I love these beds guys. This one is a self wicking bed and it's for dragon fruit, but I am growing cashew melons in them. How cool is that going to be? I'm looking forward to that. So we have a lot of those. They're starting to put off little tendrils. So I'm going to give them a little bit of string. I'm going to tie some string to this and hang it down like at the end of the plant so that then it has something to climb up on. Also back here we have our curry tree, which is putting off more seeds as you can see, but it is growing in nicely. And we have a little Another little tomato, this one is our orange hat uh, thumb tom tomato, which these ones are right and ready to pick. And then we have some random celeries in there, but otherwise these all need to get redone, my Dollar Tree pots. Hey guys, just wanna interrupt this video real quick to talk to you about Vago Garden Beds. Now, Vago Garden Beds is a sponsor for our Sunday garden tours and I just want to say big thank you to Vega Garden Bed for sending us some of these amazing garden beds to try. We have the kids bed, the cascading bed, and the dragon fruit one and I have been testing them out for all of our Arizona gardeners and our hot space desert gardeners so even you guys down in the south too and they're really good about keeping your roots not getting overheated so like I'm not worried about it burning the roots in my plants. They're giving me a lot of space because as you guys know, we live on a hot mountain and are at the base of it and our ground is completely, it's just hard. Like you can't get anything through it. So Vega Garden Bed is providing us that space to be able to grow up and in a raised bed while maintaining the durability of the bed. Because my wooden beds, I love them, but I probably need to redo them. So if you guys wanna check out Vega Garden Bed, Click the link down below. I recommend them and I hope that you guys love them too.
Okay, let's get back to the video. I feel like the middle part of my garden is like hide and seek because <laughs> there's so many things like, and then tucked underneath here, there's this, and tucked underneath there, there's that. Gotta love it. Gotta love a garden with surprises. Well, speaking of being tucked in, we have some lemon thyme right back there, which I am gonna put an umbrella over this area before the sun comes up today because I don't have time to harvest that. Um, and then we also have our grape. Now I took taking the umbrella down because we were gonna put the poles in for the grape, like the um, arches, but I haven't had time to put them in. And this one is called Yuli, another one of our namesake plants. We have our dwarf Mexican lime tree. This one is our third tree that we have in here. Yes, our third tree that we have in here. And moving on to our table, we have, look at all of this amaranth that has popped up. All of this self-seeded. I did move these ones out of this onion pot right here. So I moved those and I moved like two small ones out of this pot right here so hopefully that takes and is good to go so that then we can spread out some of some of this amaranth love that is growing in here in the garlic i want to get in here and pull this garlic before the amaranth gets too big so that then i'm not disturbing its roots but we have garlic that needs to come up here and here and then we have some onions right here and then we have some celery that even though i keep cutting it it keeps growing back and it's just doing whatever it wants to do Below it, we have our Mexican gray squash, which look at that, guys. A little fish fertilizer brought those things back to life, and they are growing a lot of new leaves. They have stopped flowering. Funny part is, is that those seeds that I was afraid that were not popping up did pop up in two of the pots, so there's that. I'm just gonna let them grow. Whatever, we're just gonna see what happens. And then there are some more garlic back there that I'm gonna be pulling up some carrots right in the middle and can you look at this can you imagine i cut these all the way back these are green onions that i got from the grocery store originally i cut them all the way down like that one and some of them just pop back up huge now one thing i really like to focus on when growing anything in my garden is to get things that can rejuvenate themselves and kind of just you plant it once and you just keep going with it those green onions have been growing since man probably like October I think is when I put them in there and I've cut them back a few times and they keep popping back up you know our eggplant our eggplant Miss Eggy is going to be six or seven I can't I can't even keep track I think seven she's gonna be seven years old how crazy is that and she's still going still going in this bed right here we have our lettuce that I need to take out and dry it for some seed but we have our Swiss chard which looks like a beautiful little bouquet of greatness and we have our corn look at how tall our corn is getting it is almost to the tops of these like little arches I'm gonna put in another bar right here so that then when monsoon season hits, it has something to kind of brace itself against. And then hopefully that'll keep it nice and strong. And then we have a little onion patch, a little random onion patch right there in the middle. And then below it, we have some radishes. I'm probably gonna be pulling these radishes because they're going to get a little woody. And I think that there's enough of a radish for us to do something with. This is the messy part of my garden, but we have our Pepper Alley is what I like to call this little space right here. Up above here, we have our cayenne pepper, which is looking amazing and has more peppers on it. We have our Santa Fe pepper. That's what we settled on. Now this one does need some shade cloth. As long as I keep it watered in the morning, it looks like this, but by the end of the day, this thing is wilted. So this one does need some shade cloth. We have our jalapeno, which is always can't stop, won't stop. This one has a lot of little buds on it. And this one's older too. And then we have Diane, which Diane is loving life and getting huge. She's getting so tall. This one is a Serrano pepper. She has her next round of little peppers on her. And she is another one of our namesake peppers. And then we have um, our last one is an Anaheim. And our Anaheim, it grew so weird. So weird, guys. I should have replanted it when it, I realized it was growing all wonky, but when I started it from seed, it was like really lengthy and growing wonky that way. And then now it's like it grew like another like bush. I don't know. It's growing wonky. I'm going to add some compost to hopefully like 
cover those roots and then I think I'm just gonna let this one grow too and then if this one grows straight then I'll cut that one off and then hopefully it'll grow out and look a little bit better but it still produces it produces a lot actually and then over here we have our new one which is our banana pepper and this one is a sweet banana pepper so it needs to not be over here with the hot ones I will be taking that out somewhere I just stuck it in this pot because I got it on a sale took off the peppers and now it's already growing back more peppers because I forgot to plant a banana pepper and Mr. Benson asked me and I was like I think I can find one and I found one on sale now I try to keep my sweet peppers way away like I don't have a huge garden but on one side of the garden are hot peppers on the other side of the pep garden are sweet peppers I'm growing a lot more hot peppers this year just because we ran out of spices in the cabinet but normally I grow way more sweet peppers because I get those in the freezer so sweet peppers I chop up put them in the freezer hot peppers I roast put some of them in the freezer and then dry them out for like powdered spices so it's kind of like a balance when you have a small space you got to say okay what do we need in the cabinet? What do we need in the freezer? And kind of balance yourself out there. We are going to be running out of bell pepper soon in the uh, um, freezer. So I think we probably have like another six months of bell peppers because my bell pepper last time I grew it went insane. So I am going to have to plant some bell peppers and get those going. But luckily we have some hot peppers that we could probably end up taking out. Our very last section, we're going to have our rosemary, and this one is our cascading um, Vago garden bed. Absolute favorite garden bed, I think, out of all of them because it gives you so much space, guys. But below at the bottom, we have some sage, we have some garlic chives, and some parsley. That one is a dill or a fennel, don't know yet. <laughs> we have some Greek thyme or German thyme, we have our basil and we have some uh, oregano. Up here we're redoing. We're just taking this whole thing out. I was trying to save the leeks, but they look crazy. So we're going to take the leeks out. And then we have some thyme back there, rosemary and sage that need to be split up because they were in a bundle and I should have split them a long time ago. Didn't do that. We have some Thai basil right here that I need to save for seed and get this maybe somewhere else. And then we have a dill back there that just looks tragic and, and sage right underneath here. But yeah, this whole bed needs to get more soil, needs to get redone and then replanted out. And then I'm also going to put my shade cloth right over both of these beds. And in the corner here we have some um, sweet marjoram and our spearmint. I am going to plant a tree right here. I have decided on which one and I have that black pot right there that's going to go there. And yeah, you guys are going to have to see what it is. Just look at this corn. I'm so happy about this corn. So that is it, guys. That is the garden in all of its greatness. I am getting ready to go off to work because it got warm just me being out here. But we have a big plan or day planned for work today. So I'm going to head out and go to work. But until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye, guys.